in Pakistan tomorrow, I think we, we agree, it will be a diverse group of people, which is a good thing. That means the diversity that's in our society will be reflected in that body, so that decisions will be, hopefully, made with consideration of those viewpoints. We recognize that there may be a majority that, that governs in Parliament, but the voices of the minority are also important, and the process to help ensure that happens. One thing that's so important as well is technical capacity. As I mentioned earlier, you don't need to be a lawyer, you don't have to have a university degree, you don't have to be a specialist. You need to be a good bridge, you need to be a good listener, but also you need to depend on people who can help you understand some of the complex issues. So looking at some of the typical structures of support that parliaments offer, sort of they provide advice on the law, advice on procedures. They also help um, manage relations with very important external audiences, other governments, the public, the media. They often provide some research services so that members can uh, ask for more detailed information about a certain law or a certain policy issue. They also manage relations with the public. So they're, uh, they help the public understand what's going on in Parliament. And they all, also provide some services to members uh, in terms of personal support uh, by their staff, the staff that work in their office. When we look at what makes a Parliament effective, because we work in a lot of places, some of the things that keep being repeated uh, about how members feel when, when we ask them, are you making a difference? Are you being successful? Really when they feel they can be a bridge, when they can take those experiences they hear in different places and they bring them into a discussion. And they can say, when I was in this village, this is the biggest question people wanted to know and I'm asking it now. Very powerful. You're not there to be some expert PhD, you're there to, to remind people that real people in real towns and villages have important questions. So being a bridge. When, when there's good staff support, parliaments and members um, can succeed, they can excel. When they're able to propose policy solutions because they have support, members feel confident. Um, and when there's effective relationships with CSOs and uh, two-way communication, where we learn from them because they do a lot of research, they have a lot of public meetings, they do a lot of networking, we can learn from them. I mentioned the asking questions, and that's one of the most important things members of Parliament will do. And I encourage you to be um, as fearless as you can in the questions you ask, and wherever possible, repeat those questions that people ask you, because that's, you have that power and that right to do so. But also, I, I think members really, when they feel that when they're making a decision, they feel some confidence that they have an understanding of the consequences of the decision. Parliament, as we've said, can play a really important role in policy making, but sometimes that, that opportunity may be overlooked because we've got to get something done quickly, we want to deliver, and it may take a little more time to engage Parliament. But what we always advise is take the time to make sure Parliament is with you so that uh, it makes it easier. They can be good salespeople, parliamentarians, but they can also ask questions which are important. Uh, so that when governments make decisions or make new policies, they've already considered perhaps in one area this may not be as, as uh, well received as in another area. And hearing those voices and those questions can help people make better decisions. So those links again to your communities and groups will be really important. Your understanding of community dynamics and relations is absolutely crucial. You can't learn that in a university. You learn that through your life experience. Your different struggles along the way, whether you were a teacher, whether you were a fisherman, whether you were in the agriculture sector, in the business sector, all those experiences have prepared you well to make decisions. And reflect on those, bring those into your work. There are many ways we can ask Parliament to engage when government is doing its work. Obviously, there could be individual meetings with ministers, some of the ministries are doing consultations, which is good to hear. Members of Parliament can be involved in that, both in committees or um, uh, in public forums. 
Also, participate in public events. There are lots of things going on here where people are talking about the changes taking place. Hear the dialogue. Come bring some news from government and then bring some news back from the dialogue uh, into the Parliament as well. Parliament has an opportunity to open its doors and ask those uh, educational institutions like Ateneo and others to come in and give their expert opinions and, and uh, research so that can help you make decisions. There are some international organizations that have long-standing relationships here. There's a very strong community of CSOs active in Bangsamoro. They've been doing peace building, they've been doing resilience support, uh, community dialogues. Draw on those uh, resources that already exist here. Um, I always like to remind MPs as well that we have two ears and one mouth. And sometimes it's, we were reminded that we can use those ears and listen and really absorb what people are saying. It makes what comes out of our mouth much more powerful. People will always ask you, what are you doing? And they want to hear something practical. They want to hear something that they can say, ah, that means something to me. That's going to affect my pocketbook. It's going to affect my family, my aspirations, my edu the education of my children, the health of my mother. They want to know something you're doing that uh, makes their lives better. The answers to the challenges uh, here are in this community. Um, we've all, as I mentioned, struggled and had our own path to, to, to where we are today. There are really important organizations. We had a fantastic meeting with the Bansamora Women's Commission yesterday. A amazing understanding of policy issues that are important, not only for women, but for everybody. Um, and a capacity to analyze laws, to analyze systems, to find the right path to make solutions. Draw on those experiences and, and uh, draw on their strength to make your work um, more successful. And as you move forward, really draw on those CSO networks. These are people that have, in some cases, drafted laws. They have looked, they've done inter research about what's worked in other countries, and they understand local context and they can adapt things. Um, but and the more that you can engage with them, the more um, you can build legitimacy. You won't always see eye to eye. They may have different opinions, but it's important that you, you listen to those because it can help you make more informed decisions.